Bismillah Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah My dear beautiful people Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah This is your brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa Today I want to talk to you about two issues On this beautiful day of the first day of the weekend But before going to that Somebody asked me the other day As to why I call you beautiful people He says I haven't seen most of you And I said yes you're right But I said beauty has got more than a meaning There is a physical beauty And there is the internal beauty. And I said to him, when I say beautiful people, I am sure those who listen to my uh, pep talks and are here in the groups are beautiful people internally. And we all aim and aspire to become the most beautiful people that can ever be. So I said, based on that, alhamdulillah, I am not lying and I am not complimenting them on something that is not there in them. But what I want to talk to you today, my brothers and my sisters, are two points. One of them is something the other day in one of my pep talks when I talked about the pink plate with the crumbs that don't need to go to waste, but I would throw them through my window so that some other creature out there would make sense of them and I become their source of risk. And subhanallah, today on my way home, I saw this uh, evening standard newspaper on a fence And on my way to the Juma, I saw it. And on the way from the Juma, I also saw it. So I said, if it is there, and Allah made me look at it, there must be something in it that Allah wants me to look at. So I went to the newspaper, and lo and behold, there was something that was there. The Sainsbury's delivery on food waste. And this is a campaign that Sainsbury, what they do is they take the food that is remaining there and instead of throwing it away, they would collect it from different stores and then take it to some places that need food and give it to people that don't have food. In other ways, they become more involved in feeding the community for free. Mr. Sadiq Khan, our mayor here to London, was also one. The, the, the van came and picked it up from his office, and he went on and picked up this box where there were pepper and everything to donate it to a family or to a group of people that are there. So to me, that is exactly what I meant the other day when I said the pink plate with crumbs, instead of draining them or throwing them in the trash or in just down the drains, I put them through my window to feed somebody else with that or some creature, so I become their source of risk. Subhanallah, that made me think. Look at the people today when Mr. Sadiq Khan, our mayor, regardless of what I think of him and when it comes to his Islam, But a lot of people out there on YouTube or on the internet always run to put people in a very difficult situation. Mr. Sadiq Khan is not a Muslim, they would say. And I go, why is that? He goes, because he supports same-sex marriage. And he does this and his wife is not wearing hijab. And I said to myself, subhanallah, what's wrong with us Muslims? Why do we always run to confrontation instead of looking in the middle way what it is between me and you that I can work with. Another, somebody posted on YouTube, also on the internet, that Theresa May, the Prime Minister now of England, is a Jewish, and she is a nasty person, and a horrible and evil person. And I said, subhanAllah, what is wrong with us Muslims? Why do we always go to confrontation? Let's assume she is a Jewish. So by us insulting her and declaring our animosity to her, kind of like, what are we going to do? Like blackmailing her into not being an evil person? It doesn't happen like that, my brothers and my sisters. Rasulullah sallallahu when he came to al Madina, when he migrated from Mecca to al Madina, when he came to al Madina, he found the three powerful tribes from the children of Israel. They were powerful both in the army and powerful also financially. They had a market and they were dominating the marketing world. The Arabs in Al Madina depended on the on, on the markets of the Jewish and the financial industry of the Jews. What did Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? He knows who the Jews are. The Quran is revealed to him. Remember when he was in Mecca in the ascension to heaven, he met his brother Moses, Musa alayhi salam. He had a conversation and Musa told him the children of Israel are difficult people. So actually when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi went to, Al- to, Mecca, to Al-Madina, he already knew that he was coming to a very powerful set of people and he is going to deal with them. 
Did Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam start straight away with animosity, declaring war on them? Not at all. He actually held meetings with them, and he worked with them closely to develop a strong community. I'm sure most of you have not heard of this, but there are treaties that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi had signed with the Jews. One of these treaties was that if anybody attacked the Muslim, the Jews would uh, lie, uh, uh, uni- unify with the Muslims to fight this enemy. If Muslims are going through some hardship, financial hardship, the Jews would go and help the Muslims. And vice versa, if someone attacked the Jews, the Muslims would defend the Jews. This is why later on in year six, when the Jews betrayed the covenant and supported Mecca against uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Rasulullah Sallallahu punished them because they broke the covenant that was between them and Muslims. For six years in Al Madinah, the Jews were absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. They were living, no problem. Even when they had problems, they would complain to Rasulullah and Rasulullah would sort out that problem for them. Why do we always Muslims look for a problem first before solution? Let me tell you an example. When I was working in London Central Mosque back in 2000 and uh, two or three and four and five, six at, at that year, I used to be the personal assistant to the director, the head of department of Dawah. So I, I and also I used to be a spokesman in the media on the on behalf of the Muslim community. I wrote articles in the newspapers and on the radio, BBC, and things like that. Alhamdulillah. One day, uh, a champion, I think it's uh, Sullivan, uh, Sullivan or somebody, I don't remember his full name, he uh, one evening embraced Islam. I was not present at the, at the, at the situation, but there was uh, uh, somebody there, a da'i, uh, Khalid Yassin, and he was there, and uh, he came to me the next day, and he was all excited. He goes, oh, you don't know uh, who embraced Islam last night? And I go, who? He goes, Sullivan. Uh, he, he's a champion, a British champion in snooker. And I was extremely happy, and I said, MashaAllah. But the idiot thing that happened is the Muslims went straight away and made like this press release that they welcome X, Y, Z to Islam and they hope he will enjoy Islam. What happened? The media came straight away to me to hold the interviews with me about this man. Has he become Muslim? How did he become a Muslim? And I said to them, I really apologize because I don't know uh, anything of the story. But if I know of anything for like two or three days, and then they went and haunted the guy until they got him, they got him and publicly held interviews with him. Have you become Muslim? The guy straight away denied it 100%. I am not a Muslim and I've got nothing to do. They said, and then they asked him, they said that you embraced Islam. He goes, no, I have not embraced. And the people, the group of people were swearing in front that he embraced Islam. How can he not, how can he say that? And I told him, because you are idiots. The guy, even if he embraced Islam, and I believe he did, but why would you go and suddenly uncover him to the whole world and the pressure and everything comes in? And he said, that's it. I have not embraced Islam. Look at the Jews, what they do. They take any personality to Jerusalem. They, wear, they have them wear the kippah. And they make them stand in front of the wall. And they take him to this uh, Holocaust museums. And they, they really convert them. They brainwash them, so to speak. And the people come back. The Jews never, ever publish this on the Internet. They never make a whole party about it. We Muslims, as my mother used to say, in this world, there are two people. There are the chicken and there are the snake. Look at it. The snake never makes a noise until when it's in front of you, you freak out. And we all get scared of the snake. But the chicken, what happens to the chicken? If you want to slaughter a chicken, you chase it. The chicken, tons of noise, a lot of dust. And when you grab the chicken from the neck, and then you lay it down and you slaughter it. But can you do the same to a snake? You can't. We Muslims, what do we gain in declaring war to this prime minister? What do we gain when we say you are a Jewish ally? What do we gain when you say you are a Jewish? What do we gain when we say Sadiq Khan is not a Muslim because he's supposed to get the same gay, uh, sex gay? What do we gain? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my brothers and my sisters, he knew that the Jews were associating with Allah. He knew they, they changed the word of Allah, yet if they did not betray him, he would have gone with them forever. 
Do you know when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa died? His armor was left with the Jew as a guarantee. That's because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa before his death, had bought some barley from this man, and Rasulullah didn't have money to pay, so he left a guarantee, his armor, that he would pay him back. Why would Allah allow his messenger to deal with a Jewish when in the Muslim there is Uthman, Abdurrahman ibn Ayf, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, Sa'ad al-Abi al-Waqqas, Uthman ibn Affar, and so many companions were rich. Why? My brothers, Islam is not empty promotion, uh, empty uh, emotions. Islam is a practical religion. It looks for the good in people and deals with that good. It's too easy to make enemies. But it's too hard to make friends. So we have got to stop looking at people our, our, as our enemies. We are not here in England, and the English people are not our enemies. They are, they are our humans, they are brothers and sisters in humanity, and they are also our brothers and sisters in the nation of Rasulullah. Let me tell you something about this. The nation of Rasulullah is any human who is born after our prophet. Anyone, anyone who is born after that is of the Ummah, Ummah, the nation of Rasulullah. Then there is the specific Ummah, are the believers. So as you can see, every English person that you see in the street deserves the right to know about Islam. Why do we choose to declare war? Why are we so stiff? Why are we so horrible to people? If, if today, or let's say today, the world leaders unify Look at the G20, not a single Arab in them. But let's say the G20 today would say, okay, we are going to create, that's it, we are going to give the opportunity to Muslims to run the world for four years. From now on, we don't make decisions, let Muslims run the world. For the love of Allah, which Muslim country is going to run the world? Saudi Arabia? If Saudi Arabia had a slightest implementation of Islam, they would be the best example in the world about the beauty of Islam. They are crooked, corrupted government. And the sheikhs, they only know a little bit about, believe it, they preach little 1% or 2% of the beauty of Islam. How come, how come, how come for the love of Allah, Saudi Arabia with the number of scholars, and we don't even have a plan to run the world, given the opportunity, only halal, the beard, shaving the beard is haram. And wearing the, the trousers below the ankles is haram. We're going to go to hellfire for that. My brothers and my sisters, the message of Islam is universal. The world that needs us is not we, the Muslims, that are going to bring that beauty to the world. And the second point of, have you ever thought of why the London Evening Standard is free of charge? Why they never, they used to charge people to read, read newspaper. Why have they suddenly decided to turn and give it for free? The campaign editor, the guy who is behind food, for, uh, food waste of Sainsbury's, is the Jewish. His name is David Cohen, and that is a pure Jewish name. So you, Muslim, the guy who is a problem to the world, you go to the people out there and you tell him Jewish are bad people, he's going to pinpoint at you and he goes, what have you done? How many Kashankari Muslims, how many people, what have you done to the world that you can show your face with? Where are you? Why does the Evening Standard give us the newspaper for free? Ever thought about it? Ever thought about it? There is a message behind everything, my brothers and my sisters, and the time now has come for us to open up to the world and on the world. Islam never came to put us in a cage. I end with this pep talk here, my brothers, by telling you there is a good news. I'm going to start a series of super pep talk. These are the regular pep talks today, but the super pep talks are going to be super pep talks, and they're going to help you climb to the next ladder in discovering the beauty of who you are. Today, my brothers and my sisters, where is your pink plate, the crumbs plate? How are you dealing with it? How are you dealing with it? And also, my brothers and my sisters, what are you dealing to support Islam?
I pray to Allah to open my eyes and your eyes to the beauty of Islam and be in Allah Taala until Monday. Monday is going to be be in Allah the first day or the first day for the super pep talk. Look forward to that. It's going to be something that's going to blow your socks off. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you uh, have a beautiful day today. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha 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 tastaghfiruka wa atubu alayk. This is brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa. And the message today is don't declare animosity to anyone out there. Insulting people gets us nowhere. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.